All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the book recommendation video. You guys have been asking me for a very long time, Prakar, what are your book recommendations? I'm 18, I'm 25, I'm 32. What books would you recommend I read? And so to figure out how people usually go about recommending books in a video, what is the format? I looked around YouTube and I saw people recommend like 10, 20, 30 books at a time. And I thought that is way too much. Like if I give you 30 books, I don't think you'd read even one. I don't even think you'd pick one. And I don't even think I know 30 books off the top of my head to recommend. So I boiled it down to three foundational books. And these three foundational books are in some way the core of how I think about stuff. These three books relate to psychology, purely human behavior, two, consciousness and the science of consciousness, and three, spiritual ways of being. And so in that, I think it covers largely everything from how do you do your everyday to peak performance to deep spiritual being, right? And for that purpose, I decided I choose these three books. I want you to watch the video till the very end because not just are we going to discuss what books you should be reading, but why. And we'll talk about these books in a way they've influenced me and the way they've given me things to think about beyond just what is in the book itself. The way meta concepts have arrived to me from reading those books. Okay. Without further ado, let us begin. My name is Prakar Gupta and I build more confident Indian minds. Number one is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. I've recommended this book more times than I can count. I've gifted this book to friends more times than I can count. Like at this point, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life is the one book I say to anybody who asks me for a book recommendation. And part of it is because when I was a struggling early 20 or something in my life, going from place to place, I just landed in New York. I'd just gone from being a big fish in a small pond where things were figured out to a small fish in a huge pond where things were completely alien. I didn't understand what my actions meant. I didn't even begin to comprehend what I should do with my life. I felt like a lost puppy, as my friend describes. And that's when Jordan Peterson entered my life. First through YouTube videos and podcasts, but eventually through the book. And I think that book transformed my life. It was so simple and so beautiful. The book went through complex information on psychology, deep psychology, neurobiology, neuroscience, right, mythology, all of those things combined. Peterson would find a way to take all that information and how it would play out between disciplines and compress them in simple aphorisms. And through that book, not only did I learn the simple rules of life, stand up straight with your shoulder back, clean your room before you set out to clean the world, all of that. But more importantly, I understood what the idea of wisdom meant. I understood that wisdom is essentially the compression of complex information down to simple aphorisms, down to simple one-liners. And I saw a man do it in action. And the best part was I saw this man do it in audio for me, on the audiobook on Audible that I was listening to. Because I'd be working out at the gym or I'd be walking around the city cleaning my apartment sometimes, right? Like just doing laundry, listening to the man talk to me. Some of the fondest memories I have in my early time in New York. I was a boy from... Faridabad in New York, man. I was that, that was all. I was a boy with potential, just like so many of us are. And the way he told me, step by step, with enough information, with enough details, with enough sophistication and nuance, how to fix my life, how to slowly put the pieces of my life together, transformed the way I worked and I functioned in my everyday level. This book, I would rate an easy nine and a half out of 10 because I do not know what a 10 on 10 might look like. A 10 on 10 would blow my mind a little more maybe because of the simplicity of its writing, because of the complexity of the information and because of the wisdom it pours out on an everyday level. I definitely recommend you get this book and I recommend you get this book in audio format. Let the man whisper to you. Trust me, there's very few people in the world who I would let whisper in your ear and Peterson's one of them. Number two is Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. Stephen Kotler is known for running the Flow Genome Project, which is a project that explores the many ways in which flow states can be achieved. And that is what the book is about. I read this book back in 2015. This is back when I was still running my conversation club. And I think a friend who'd come over had recommended this book. And I remember reading like the first four or five pages of this book. And I was just like, why is this information hidden? Stealing Fire is essentially the name Stealing Fire comes from the myth of Prometheus in Greek mythology. Prometheus was a titan. Titans are 
one level above gods they are the fathers and that that generation of olympian gods so there's zeus and poseidon and hades and whatever and then there is kronos and prometheus and all these guys right so at this point in the greek mythology the gods rule and the gods are very angry with humans so zeus says there is no more fire available to humans there is no more fire we take all the fire away and prometheus who's a friend of gods even though he's a titan he steals fire and gives it to humans and the idea is that stealing fire is an act of finding something that is godly and giving it to humans and that is the exact feeling i got after reading like the first 6 7 pages because what i understood is that consciousness which is how we experience life is not a linear phenomena this entire book stealing fire explores the reality of alternate consciousness and then the reality of peak performance in alternate consciousness right when we speak of meditation and spirituality it is somewhat guiding your consciousness into an alternate state when we speak of psychedelics it is pretty much guiding your consciousness into an alternative state but then there is flow states and there is some commentary around the subject that flow states in hindi translate into chaitanya bhav but some people disagree the general point is flow states is a particular kind of state of consciousness where you are optimized for performance and there is a way to get there and the way to get there is what this book is about and the book does not just stop there the book is in fact so interesting it talks about how like really outcome based situations like navy seals like the ceos of big companies like google right jason silva who's a tv presenter who i remember drawing so much inspiration from after reading the book they all have figured out different ways to optimize for flow i think at its core flow states is the secret for some of the most obvious successes we see in life there is a reason why people can perform at the level they do and they cannot probably articulate it but steven kotler for sure can if you want to figure out how to do that if you want to figure out how to integrate that in your life this is a deeply practical everyday level information plus practice primer I would recommend 10 on 10. When I read it in 2015, which is now 8 years ago, things changed forever. Like forever. I was just like now I get something that was like I wish my parents would tell me that. I wish they knew. The third book, frankly, the greatest book to listen to in the history of books is Osho's Mahashtavakra Gita. See, the meta concept here is that spiritual truths are not so easily tellable in logic j krishnamurti came very close to like really using logic and intellect to explain spiritual truths but people are particularly bad at spreading intellectual ways of telling spiritual truths and very bad at absorbing intellectual spiritual truths it's just very complicated to say in words one way to explain it is that words are the finger that point towards the truth but itself is never the truth and so words do poorly at expressing the true meaning of life the spiritual meaning of life but osho was a man of words if he was a man of anything and maha ashtavakra gita does a very good job at putting spiritual truths in narratives and dialogues which is how we understand them best there were so many ideas of spiritual well being we could not tell to people because they won't absorb and it was very difficult to tell and put them in words and people would always get confused so we invented stories around it and maha ashtavakra gita is a story about many stories let's say the broad theme of this is about a boy and that boy is bent and distorted in his physical shape in eight places hence the name ashtavakra right and this boy telling janak who we know from ramayan to be sita's father all the spiritual truths he knows and this book is so so well done and you should only like forget about reading this book only 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 please get this in audio book i'm not kidding right let osho whisper into you if jordan peterson's one person had let whisper into your ear osho is definitely another because the first 45 minutes of this audio book is just osho breaking down some of the deepest metaphors accessible to the human mind like there is a 10 minute segment where he compares a seed to a tree and what that means for our life and by god is it genius by god is it straight beautiful right and in these three books you will travel between what do i do every day using my psychology and my understanding of the world what is the map of my immediate reality and what should i do to what is the process to get to peak performance to what is the foundation of my spiritual being and if you manage to read all these three books by the end of this year trust me you will open 2024 in a fantastic 
drastically new way you will enter 2024 as being somebody completely different from who you've been up until and i can tell you this because i read ashtavakra gita in 2020 i think it was 2020 or 2020 2021 i was in the forests in the himalayas traveling by myself walking around letting osho whisper into my ear and when i came back from that trip my mother said there's something different about you and i said i agree and that's because god damn god damn there is a very interesting line that um osho begins ashtavakra gita with he says listen hamare paas krishna ki gita hai par krishna ki gita sab ki gita hai krishna ki gita kavya hai it's a it's a it's poetic and so everybody finds meaning in it everybody extracts their meaning from it that is why there is so many iterations of bhagavad gita that is why there is vallabhai patels gandhi devdat patnaik everybody finds a way to interpret it but with ashtavakra there is no interpretation it's just straight and simple the truth but that is why it was so life changing for me best part is you can listen to all of these books on audible there is a limited time offer where you get audible for free for the first two months you can let these teachers talk to you in your ear as you walk around doing your stuff which is how i enjoy reading books honestly if you go to my audible account there's just lines of books i've finished on flights while i'm traveling while i'm in the metro while i'm going to work all of those things and i think i think that's where the world's moved to the world prefers convenience over sitting down and turning pages and i think it's a fantastic idea you can absorb information in your passive time why not right with that if you have any more questions please leave your questions to me on twitter or on instagram the tags are right here you can find me there and if you were here for the first time and you loved the way these books were recommended let me know so i make more videos like this and do not forget to press the subscribe button we are right here as always waiting for you see you next time